Book six for the School for Good and Evil is finally out! So in honor of that, we will be reviewing the first five books, starting with book number one. Let's get started. Hello everyone, it's Jesse, an artist living in Japan, and today we are going to be reviewing book number one of the series The School for Good and Evil by Soma Chainani. As always, I try to make these reviews without spoilers because some of you might not have read the book yet. But if in the case that I do, I would let you know in big giant letters. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so sit down, get comfortable, have your cup of tea, and let's get to it. This is a fantasy series by Soman Chainani, and the first volume is just called simply The School for Good and Evil. So you have to read these in sequential order because if you don't, then the story doesn't make any sense. You can't skip either. He grew up in Key Biscayne, Florida, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. If I'm not, just let me know down below in the comments. He's of Indian heritage and, in my humble opinion, is very attractive. Hmm, I approve. He graduated from Harvard with an English and American literature degree and then later on went to Columbia University to study in their MFA film program. And if you don't already know this, Universal Studios picked up his book and is making a book now on Netflix. Watch out for it. The film is going to be directed by Paul Feig, you know that guy who directed the uh, recent 2016 Ghostbusters movie? Yeah, that guy. And I apologize if I mispronounce certain things, uh, please forgive me. The story starts in a simple town called Gavaldon, where every few years, I believe every four years, some child gets kidnapped into the school for good and evil. Usually there is a child picked for the school for good and another separate child picked for the school for evil. And in this book, we follow two main heroines. One is Agatha, which is the very misunderstood female character that everyone thinks is creepy. She has a bald cat and lives by a cemetery. And then we have Sophie, who is traditionally considered beautiful, has blonde hair, is very into herself, and she actually wants to get kidnapped so that she can escape this very boring life in Gavaldon and have her happily ever after. However, both girls are actually kidnapped. Sophie is dumped into the school for evil to take uglification courses, henchmen's training, and I believe there was also death curses as well. Meanwhile, Agatha, a girl that everybody thought was weird and creepy, goes to the school for good and she is learning princess etiquette classes, animal communication, it's all very cool. As the book writes, what if the first mistake is actually the first clue to finding out who Agatha and Sophie are? We do see a lot of magic where you get stronger the more you learn. The magic comes out of their fingers instead of using a wand, although there is a particular character that uses a wand that I shall not name at the moment. And you have to go through the school for good and evil for four years in order to graduate and be able to enter your own fairy tale and hopefully survive it because you might not survive it, and that's kind of sad, and yeah. So this is not a copy of Harry Potter, it is definitely a, its own world. Now as for characters, we do see some big themes as to what is good and what is evil. Apparently not everybody is 100% evil or good, nor does everything look like what it seems. In this first volume, I think the biggest theme is don't judge a book by its cover. Just because you're a creepy girl with a bald cat living in a cemetery does not actually make it creepy. And just because you're blonde and beautiful and stereotypically nice does not mean that you're actually nice. <laughs> and I actually do really quite enjoy reading about both Sophie and Agatha as well as other characters that come into play in this story. However, my main drawback is I want more! I just, I want more! I need more! 
This book does introduce a new magical world with rules that bind it. So in that sense, I think if you are very into fantasy and you're a Harry Potter fan, you're also going to love this book as well. It adds new perspective as to what a fairy tale is, how you even train for one, and tries to define what is good versus evil, who is the villain and who is the hero. I just love it when new books add new information to a genre that we already know about because when we have new info, it kind of opens our world, it opens our perspective, and you think, wow, oh my god, I didn't know that. So to wrap it up here, this book didn't feel slow at all. I was hooked all the way and finished it very, very quickly. I'm, I'm actually surprised at myself how quickly I uh, finished it. So yes, I would definitely recommend this book. And for the first volume, I give it five stars because it's that good. If you have not picked this book up already, I really do recommend that you try it and just come along in the journey. As always, thank you for watching this video. Let me know if you liked it by clicking that thumbs up button and I will see you next time. Ciao! People stop texting me. Sorry, it's so rude. I don't... I don't sign with my things. I forget to sign with them.